Welcome everybody. I want to do an episode today to talk about this Excel spreadsheet I have made for my draft rankings. I know a lot of people um, kind of don't realize how easy it is to export from Excel. I made an episode in the past. Uh, I've updated my spreadsheet quite a bit since then. It's pretty neat now. So I think I um, just want to make an episode to kind of go over some of the stuff I put on here, which is pretty cool. So it all starts in this data tab. Um, I'll shout out Tyler, San Francisco, both Tyler, San Francisco, Tyler, and my league um, really showed me, uh, helped me a ton with these formulas. We spent hours and hours and hours on going over some of the advanced stuff um, and just helping with the math on a ton of things and kind of trial and error and stuff. So it was huge help from uh, San Francisco Giants to Tyler there. And then also Seattle, Tyler, a while back, showed me how to use Excel. So definitely the two guys have really helped me um, a long way with this Excel sheet. And so between the three of us, um, been really cool. I've made some really neat formulas. Um, Definitely the San Francisco Tyler had a lot of cool ideas for that. And we made some nice ones for the pitchers and the hitters. So essentially all you do is you export all these data, um, all the data from out of the park. So you go to out of the park and then you just have your export tab. You do it in the exact same order I do it in, which is just the order here, left to right. You can pause the screen. All the black ones at orange, it stops. So just from the game are the ones that are black at the top. So you just go left to right there. And like I said, you can pause the screen if you want to copy my exact order. Um, and then you just kind of export all the important information. The orange ones are when I start doing my own formulas. So I take the stats that were on the left there, that um, like base running. So my base running formula is like if base running is smaller than 35, I want there to be a dot. So then there's blank if it's above 35. So you can do a lot of different formulas like that. And then, sorry, I had to sneeze there. I paused. And then, yeah, so all these orange formulas are ones that like I manually made up or somebody else did. So um, took the original template So um, and then kind of made it my own, which is cool. So I put a lot of different stuff in. And uh, so as you can see here, there's a ton of stuff we added in. Uh, I wanted to do, like for the hitters tab, I wanted to flag stuff if it's really bad. Like it's for like a draft. So I want to say um, it's blank if it's fine, but if it's like really bad, I want it to be red. So like the speed, if the speed is way higher in their stealing rating, meaning they're going to try and attempt a ton of stolen bases, but they're going to get caught a lot, I want it to be red. So anyone that has like 75 speed, but only like 55 stealing rating, I want a red flag. So that's uh, formulas in there. The base running, I want to highlight anyone that has below 35 base running. I wanted to highlight red if they have pull ground ball tendency, which is really bad. Because uh, then they're going to hit into a lot of shifts and stuff. And then also it's going to go dark red if it's extreme pull. So that's a really bad. So I wanted to highlight that too. And then the batted ball tendency, like it goes red if they're a ground ball guy. And then if it's a light blue, they're line drive. And if it's like that cool tealy blue, they're um, in green, they're like a fly ball hitter. So you add some fly. And then the thumbs up if they're a good base stealer. If they have like 75 or 80 stealing, they get a thumbs up. So again, instead of actually having to put the number in there, a, little, a couple more visual cues, which is cool. Um, so across the board here, you have all the information for hitters, uh, the position they're listed at in the game, and then the, I do a formula to say what position they should actually be at based on their ratings. So that's one of the more complicated ones in the game um, that I've, or sorry, in Excel that I've made. So the positional one uh, was a big if statement I made. Um, again, a lot of help with uh, Tyler with that. That one is um, essentially says it starts at the top and it says like if they're at least 65 ability and 45 arm, they're catcher plus. And then if they're like 60 ability and 35, their catcher equals. And then it rates them on their defense. And then it says like, so they have to pass any of those conditions to be listed at the ones in the brackets. And then if they're not, it goes over to shortstop. And then it goes down the defensive spectrum to the very bottom, which is like first base DH. So essentially it ranks them and it puts them at the highest possible defensive position that they're able to play at a good level based on their ratings. So like you said, this, um, this guy... Uh, is listed in the game at right fielder, but he can't actually play well enough there, Dan Beeford, so he gets listed at first base equals. Um, but So it's really cool you get uh, stuff like that. So uh, it also has all their injury rating and stuff and where they bat. So for this all hitters tab, all the important hitter stuff, I have the age, where they, how they hit, the throwing, handedness, and all that. And then it has the main four intangibles here, leadership, work ethic, intelligence, adaptability. And then I have all my red flag stuff that I just made. Uh, and then it starts to get real cool with the stats on the right here. So hit ability is a weighted thing here. Uh, hit ability is 25% contact, 5% gap, 40% power, 25% eye, 5% avoid to add up to 100, but it's not weighted equally. I wanted power to be a lot more important and then contact and eye to be next. So if you look back at that all hitters tab, that's how it takes all their currents at those weighted things, it adds them all together and divides them 
like by those percentages, and it spits out the number. So a 28 would mean, and like a, 20, a 35 would be like a higher current, obviously. So that means like for more or less, they kind of have like 30, 35 across the board. Or again, if they have really high power and low and the other stuff kind of makes up for it. Um, the hit potential is the same weights, but just off their potential ratings. So if you sort like this draft, for example, I filtered out the top guys so you guys don't see all my draft lists or whatever, but um, you can filter out uh, and then see like some of the better bats in the draft. And then the percentage weight is really cool. That is just, um, that's weighted essentially. It's like 12% currents and 88% potential. So it takes these two numbers and it just makes it, instead of just going by potential, you want to reward those guys that are more developed. So it, it just kind of skews the numbers a bit and makes it so um, it rewards the guys that are, have higher current ability. So like this 31 gets rewarded pretty high. His 56 only drops to a 54 because the current's so high. But if you see these other guys, like they'll drop a lot more. Like they'll drop five or six points in from the potential because the currents are really low. Like this guy drops from 61 to a 56. That's five full points he drops because his currents are so low. He's so raw because he's a high school guy. So anyways, um, that's for that stuff. The percentage developed is just like how per the percentage of their currents compared to their potential. So this guy's 47% developed. 61%. So another kind of way of just telling the development percentage. Uh, position fixer, that is really complicated. That's This one is, um, uh, what is it again? C, call it category CJ. So CJ is uh, position fixer. This is a huge formula that essentially it gives more of a boost to the middle of the field players. And it takes away from first base and DH. Because if you just go by like the offensive stats, the first base will come out the top. But since it's kind of like made for a draft ranking, I wanted the shortstops and catchers to get rewarded more. So it, it, see Beeford here, like it takes his 50, 61 hit potential and lowers it to a 53 because he's a first baseman. So it takes a big chunk out of him where it keeps it the same for Havard here because he's a catcher. Uh, so it says, um, but it would actually boost him if he was better defense. He's a catcher minus. If he was like a catcher plus, he'd go actually go up. So it just kind of balances out based on the position they play and it rewards the guys that play good defensive positions then you have exit velocity potential which is essentially how hard they hit the ball like in real life everyone talks about exit velocity so for exit velocity i did 40 percent contact 14 percent gap and 46 percent power doesn't include any or i or void k that's that stuff is just in the uh, approach which is down here 65 and 35 so the exit velocity is just essentially how hard they hit the baseball so you can guys see the guys that hit the ball real hard and then the discipline potential is the opposite. It's just based on I and avoid K. So you can see who has good plate approach, who hits the ball really hard. And then athleticism is base, mainly base running. So you can see the guys that run the base really well. Higher the number, the better, obviously. And then this is just current contact, current power, current I. And then potential contact, potential power, potential I. And then these deviations are really cool. This is current deviations. So it's like how far from the average um, standard deviations the player is so the positive is obviously better um for currents and then the same thing for potential so this guy's currents are actually really low because he's like a really raw high school guy so he's actually a negative it's actually worse than your average currents in the draft but his potential is 2.5 so um it shows the guys that are really high floors high ceilings all the different stuff like that if you know what i'm saying and it shows the averages at the top which is cool so like the average guy in this draft's hit potential is, uh, 43 so these top guys are at like 61, 65 and stuff. So it's really cool show all that. And then the positional overall is just essentially another really cool one. So that's uh, category C. Um, where's a C here? So C, this category here, we get um, <laughs> positional overall. So this is another thing. I um, tech, uh, San Francisco Tyler uh, helped me create all these. These are uh, the same weights, but for each position. So, like, the defense um, is weighted at catcher, like, 75% is his ability, 25% is his arm. At first base, it's, like, 30 and 30. Uh, at shortstop, it's really high weighted towards range. Second base is kind of like shortstop, but a lot higher turn double play, but less arm than shortstop. So, he actually, Tyler went through and um, by position kind of, like, came up with what he thought uh, the positional weight should be. And then offensively, they're really similar across the board because, obviously, like, offensively at the plate, it's more – it doesn't really matter what position you are. And then it shows that, like, each position what you want to weight the offense compared to the defense. So, at, like, catcher, it's, like, kind of balanced. At first base and third base, it's really high offense. At shortstop and center field, it's kind of, like, closer to almost 50-50 there. And then so you add all this together, so it gives you, like, positional overall. So catch your current offense rating, catch your potential offense rating – and then catcher defensive rating, and then catcher overall. So the positional overalls is just like if they're a catcher, pull their catcher overall. If they're a first baseman, pull their first base overall. And then essentially it makes it a positional overall for everybody. So you can sort by that, and that kind of 
is a really good way of putting everybody in the draft kind of like ranked in order. Uh, so that's really all the stuff for position players. And the coolest part I just made that I forgot to tell you guys is I used to do a bunch of different tabs for positions, but then I realized it's so much better to just do the slicer. So uh, you just insert a slicer and you just literally all you have to do is click that button. And it just shows you all the first baseman. And then you click second base, shows you all the second baseman. You can do, so you just hit exit to go back to everybody. You can hit this button and you can do multiple. So I want to see all the infielders. So you hit the button and you show first base, second base, third base, and uh, shortstop. Oh, hit the wrong one there. So this just shows all the infielders, and then uh, say you wanted to just show middle of the field guys, you could just uh, leave it on shortstop there, and then you just want to show center field catchers and second baseman. So you show all the guys in the middle of the field, um, and you can do the opposite. You could just show like the power guys in the corner. So you just want to see first baseman, third baseman, DH left fielders. Really interesting, um, and you can kind of like sort things by that. If you just want to see the guys that are switch hitters, you can just turn that off and just show the switch hitters. Uh, you just a lot of different stuff you can see with the filter, so it's pretty neat uh, overall. Pitching wise, all the same, similar stuff. The slicers just like relief pitchers, college pitchers, high school pitchers. Uh, you can see at the top here, Jeremy St. Pierre is just in a league of his own. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, his pitch fixer, the highest rating, comes at 68. Next highest guy is 64. Pitch uh, potential, same as the hitting stuff. The pitch potential, like it's just weighted for stuff, movement, and control. And the currents, the relievers are weighted heavily less towards control, more towards like stuff and movement. And then the um, shows everything here, like velocity, stamina. The best part I did was um, I don't. It shows a guy that has like three pitches sometimes, but his third pitch will be like a twenty twenty five, and I don't necessarily count that. I don't really count a pitch unless it's like a fifty. So I made a thing where it pulls all their pitches and it says how many minimum. 50 potential pitches they have, how many minimum 60s, and how many minimum 70s. So you can really see at the top here some of these guys, like you'd sort it, you want to see who has, uh, this guy's 370 potential pitches, like Kimball. So they're really elite guys at the top there, so you can see stuff like that. Uh, this is the same as the hitter one, which just shows percentage develop, current to potential. You can show the highest current guys in the draft by sorting by that. You can show the highest potential guys. The current potential weighted is, again, it's weighted 88% towards potential and 12% towards current. So, again, it's just kind of like weighting by potential, but then sprinkling out a bit of currents there to see the guys that are developed. And the pitch fixer is a big formula that essentially just takes uh, minor minuses and pluses for little things. So, if they have, like, uh, if they're fragile, it nerfs them by a couple, like a percent or two. And if they're... Um, if they have like four good pitches, it gives them a little bit of a boost instead of just having three and different stuff like that. And then they're in the tiers here. The higher the tier, the better. Uh, and then it shows like what they throw left or right. And so you can just sort by like just you want to see the relief pitchers. You can sort by relievers. So just see the high school um, pitchers. You can sort by that. You can just see the lefties if you go here and you just sort by lefties. You can see all the lefties in the draft. So there's a lot of really cool um, stuff this helps you do. And then another episode I can go into the major league one. I exported all the major league data, and then I made these cool little color-coded things uh, for the teams, which was pretty neat. That was uh, just designed them in here using the real-life color combination. So you just go to this, go to their site, and you go to fill and fill effects. And you, um, if you go here and go to custom color, there's like a hex code it's called. So you can actually find out the real-life hex colors on the website. If you just Google like the Arizona Diamondbacks hex colors, it'll say like their red is color code dollar sign a71930 and you can copy and paste it into there and get the exact colors and then just do color one color two and then you can actually design them and then i just did like the white font and then you can like make the little color so i did it for all the 30 teams or whatever so it's pretty neat seeing the um the actual colors because i didn't realize those color codes even existed for like rgb lights and leds and stuff so you can actually do the exact colors of the team so it looks pretty neat for some of them um, and so yeah this mlb one is essentially all the same stuff but more weighted towards like the pro stuff so you can actually see like who has the highest rated stuff for like the major league players at the top which is pretty neat in my opinion and then yeah there's some other stuff i have here um like my big board and then the two big board just combines the hitters and the pitchers and then it shows the two-way guys in the draft they can play both uh, stuff like that and then i have all the prospects in the league uh, me and tyler exported all the prospects for all the minor league systems um so it shows all the guys in the game which is really neat and uh, has like the best prospects in the league i'm in so it's pretty easy to export you can just uh do it like super easy you essentially just go to here and go to this uh same order i have it in listed at on excel so it's uh i just call it export and you just go to um sorry i'm on the wrong one here you have to do it from another screen, I guess. So, um, or sorry, yeah, I was on the right one. So you hit report, you hit open report, and then, uh, oh, 
you make sure it's on uh, export there. You hit open report and then you just hit open in browser and then you're going to highlight everything and then highlight them all, copy, and then you're just going to move it down to um, Excel and then you're just going to control paste here starting like right here and then it just auto fills everything. So pretty easy way to uh, to do that and then it just gets all the information in the game. So you can just keep re-exporting the draft class um, based on new information when you get more developed scheduling reports as you go, more accurate reports. So every couple months I just re-export all the data and then uh, everything's just linked to their player ID so you don't have to worry about any like duplications or anything. So pretty neat system and in, in all. So if any questions, just DM me, um, comment on the video if you want to learn how to make this. Cheers.